When it comes to research on eco-labels, we understand increasingly about state certification interactions. But far less attention has been paid to the interaction between certification schemes or eco-labels. So in recognising that they have different goals, do they work cooperatively, do they compete with each other, or is it something else altogether? And what are the implications these interactions have for authority and credibility of the eco-labels? Private eco-labels require constant reaffirmation of their credibility in order to legitimise them and gain authority. Credibility is relational. For example, uh, our credibility as researchers is built up through a relationship with others and is a reflection of their opinion on our professional conduct. As such, we expect authority to follow credibility and we expect credibility to be actively generated through the relations those private eco-labels have with those that they try to regulate. The practices of eco-labeling organisations to generate credibility are therefore observable and measurable. We identified five criteria against which we assess credibility. First, scientific rigour, which refers to the incorporation of independent scientific knowledge into the principles and verification process of an eco-label. Second, inclusiveness, referring to whether diverse interests are heard in the formal deliberation um, and if there is critical engagement with both expert and non-expert groups. Third, transparency, relating to the degree of openness in decision making and accessibility of the information needed to determine the impact of the eco-labels principles. Fourth, independence, referring to the separation of the standards with those verifying the standards. Fifth, impact. Uh, and that refers to the extent to which there is a measurable impact based on compliance with the standards and the principles and that relates to both short-term operational and long-term strategic improvements in a fishery. So using these indicators we analyse the credibility of two eco-labels, the Marine Stewardship Council and the Earth Island Institute's Dolphin Safe. These look at uh, different aspects of fisheries and more specifically tuna sustainability and their interaction in the certification of skipjack tuna fisheries in the waters of the PNA. The results for this research came through interviews with 11 key informants, including the Marine Stewardship Council and the Earth Island Institute, um, with attendance at the 9th Western Central Pacific Fisheries Commission, at two European tuna conferences, and through extensive document analysis. The MSC has three levels of analysis, principles, criteria and performance indicators. The Earth Island Institute's Dolphin Safe System of Standards and Criteria went no further than principles. The MSC certification process remains costly and to date around 10% of developing country fisheries are certified. The Earth Island Institute Dolphin Safe label covers more than 450 companies. There are three levels of transparency for MSC. The certification methodology is made public, they have public objections procedure, and they conduct change of custody certification for product traceability. The Earth Island Institute, its Dolphin Safe label, has poor communication about the assessment methodology and no opportunity for objection. The MSC involves third party certification through independent auditors. Under Earth Island Institute, skippers are responsible for reporting and Earth Island Institute conducts some internal monitoring. The MSC promotes innovation and improvement. The Earth Island Institute's Dolphin Safe label has very large market impact but does not promote improvement or innovation. But contrary to what is widely assumed, the results indicate that the authority from private eco labels does not follow from credibility when there are clear conflicts of interest with those that are being governed. The MSC has high apparent credibility but low apparent authority in the PNA. EII Dolphin Safe has high apparent authority but low credibility as measured by our criteria. So if we come back to our interest in the interaction between eco-labels, we don't see a race to the bottom because there's not been a lowering of any standards to compete. The interaction between these eco-labels is also not complementary, but because MSC takes an ecosystem-based approach, they don't need to adapt the standards to include dolphins. Instead, we identify what we call an innovation stalemate because the merits of a broader definition of sustainability under MSC are constrained by the reputational risk to companies not additionally supporting Earth Island Institute's Dolphin Safe label. All eco-labels have to continually work at maintaining their credibility. While attention goes to change on the water, continuing attention needs to be given to how their credibility is maintained in relation to the wider industry they attempt to regulate.